Hello, this is my portrait of Sylvester Stallone as Rocky Balboa. I did this a few months ago and posted a time-lapse video, but now I'm going to do a longer narrated video and talk a little bit more about the drawing process. I'm also working on a new Rocky drawing, and that will be published in a few days. But for now, let's talk about this one. I'm starting with a sketch, which I always do with a graphite pencil. And some people asked me how I do the initial sketch. Do I use any transfer methods? I normally like to use a combination of freehand and tracing. Tracing allows you to create a sketch very quickly, although freehand drawing is a lot more fun. But I often like to use a combination of both, so I use tracing to lay down some of the main points and some of the main distances, and then I, I start to work freehand and I create a more detailed and more elaborate sketch, which is what I'm doing now. And once I create the more detailed sketch, I go in with charcoal pencils. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you could you could see that I mostly work with charcoal pencils, but lately I've been using a little bit of vine charcoal as well. And this is what I'm using now. I'm using a vine charcoal stick. And it looks a little bit like a pencil because I sharpened it. I sharpened vine charcoal as well. It can be sharpened very easily, actually. And the reason why I've been using vine charcoal is because it kind of helps with shading. I mean, I could achieve the same thing with charcoal pencils, but it just makes some things a little bit easier. It's a little bit lighter in tone and it's softer, it can be blended and moved around more easily, so using a combination of that and a charcoal pencil uh, can make the shading a lot quicker, it can make the whole process a lot quicker and more fun. But you sort of have to practice using both and you have to get to know both of them and when you know how they work you can actually combine them pretty well. You can see how quickly I'm covering this large area. And I don't I know that it doesn't look like much, but I can always blend that and lift off some of that using my erasers and refine it a little bit. So now I'm using a tritillion to blend that in. And once I do that, I'm going to be establishing a basic tone. And then I'm going to be going over that with charcoal pencils, creating some of the darker tones. I'm using a soft charcoal pencil now to lay down some of these darker tones, which I'm also going to be blending. And the idea, of course, is to use a combination of these lighter and darker tones to give this Rocky's hat a little bit of volume and shape. So I'm going to be blending that using my usual blending tools, a tertillion and brushes. Now you can see that I'm using my blending tools to add a little bit of background here and I'm also dabbing a little bit with a tissue to spread the charcoal onto the background a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to be adding a very light background there. But first I'm going to be focusing on the hat a little bit and um, trying to do most of it before I, uh, before I move on to the background. Again, uh, now I'm using a medium charcoal pencil and uh, just cross-hatching a little bit, trying to add some of these darker areas. 
and you can see how the hat is now starting to take shape you can see that it feels like something that has volume and a shape of its own So I'm working on the rim of the head, but the top part of course is not finished and it's going to need to be blended. And you'll see once I start working with brushes how much smoother that will become. Even though I don't want it completely smooth, I, uh, I'm still going to want to have some texture left so that it feels like it's made of cloth. and I can always use a pencil eraser to pull some of these highlights and clean up some of the edges. And I can also use that pencil eraser to add a little bit more of the texture as well. Basically you can use the pencil eraser in a similar way that you use a pencil. I'm smoothing everything out uh, with a brush occasionally, but when I feel like I need some areas to be darker, I just go back in with a charcoal pencil and then I um, add a little more value. I'm working on this rim of the hat and uh, the hat is almost done. You can see how uh, complex the hat itself is in terms of shading and shape and the hat itself could have been a subject to draw I mean that itself could have been a subject to a video on its own but uh, this video is not about the hat it's about Rocky so uh, I'm gonna be talking about other things as well obviously so I'm trying to make this edge uh, of the rim of the hat a little bit ragged and worn out and just pull some of the highlights uh, to make everything look a little more detailed and realistic and as you can see I also uh, started working on the background a little bit I'm gonna do a very light background and the background uh, the background is there for a reason now I'm working on the eyes and I'm using a well sharpened medium charcoal pencil. Like I said the background is there for the for a reason. First I want something there to to make the drawing a little bit more interesting and also to create contrast with some of the lighter areas on the head and the face. Here you can see that I've drawn the shape of the eye and Sylvester Stallone has very big eyes with long eyelashes but now I'm shading the eyeball and the eyes are round objects so you need to shade them so that the edges are always a little bit darker and they're kind of getting a little bit lighter towards the middle and because the pupil of the eye normally has a highlight or a reflection if you shade the eyeball uh, properly the reflection will stand out a little bit more and it will look a little bit more convincing and it will make uh, the eyes look a little more realistic the as you can see with this area of the hair and the color the, the the drawing has a lot of these darker areas and this is where charcoal really excels it's really good for the drawing these darker portraits with a lot of darker areas and uh, where a lot of contrast is needed 
I also recently did a similar portrait of Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow. And drawings like this really look much, much better in charcoal than in some other media. In addition to the pencils, you can see that I also draw with my tutilians. I can use my tutilians to do a little bit of sketching, to draw some of the facial features tentatively before I move in with a charcoal pencil, or to draw some of the shapes uh, where I feel like I don't need a darker tone or where I want to avoid texture. So now I'm back to using a vine charcoal stick to shade the face. I'm just going to shade the face with vine charcoal and blend it with a soft brush to establish a nice mid-tone and then I'm going to be drawing darker and lighter areas to give that face more shape. Because you see it's not enough to draw lines uh, on the face. Uh, the in in real life there are no lines, there are shapes and light, so you can't just leave uh, lines, you have to shade around them, every line has to mean something. I talked a little bit about that in my video about drawing ears, it was a small tutorial. And now I'm adding a little bit of charcoal here and there and spreading it with a brush. Later you will see that I will actually use a black colored pencil to, to do a lot of the shading because I like using a black colored pencil on top of charcoal because it can be sharpened well and it gives me a lot of control when shading and it also helps me to create some textures. So here you see me doing more of the background. Like I said, this background has two purposes. First, uh, I just want to make the drawing a little more interesting. And the second is to give, to, to create contrast with some of the lighter areas of my portrait so that it stands out more and that it, that it so that I can give it more depth make it pop out of the paper a little bit more. You can see the, the face in this stage looks kind of smooth. I don't want that. I want to uh, give it a lot more texture, so a lot more shading is needed even though the, the face is already taking shape, so it looks like Sylvester Stallone, but and the topography of the face is in place, but but I still need a lot more detail on it so that I can achieve a more realistic look. And this is where the black color pencil will be helpful because it will create a lot of that texture, which I won't blend, but I'll just go over it softly with, with a, bl a brush and hopefully I'll be able to produce something that looks like rough skin. But there's still a lot more work to be done. So like I said, I like using a black color pencil on top of the charcoal work and it just uh, makes things easier and it has a couple of advantages. But as you can see, I can just do a lot of the shading just using a brush and using some of the charcoal uh, laying around and spreading it. Or I can just sharpen some of my pencils and use that charcoal dust to create some of these darker areas of darker value. And now I'm working on the jacket. It's a leather jacket and 
Um, I'm going to be trying a little bit to imitate its texture, but I think that and what's even more important than imitating the texture is trying to imitate the appearance of, of, a, of a leathery surface by making some parts of it shiny so as long as I create enough contrast hopefully it will look like a leather jacket and I'm also trying to create a little bit of texture with my eraser and I'm gonna to need to pull some highlights on the color as well to make it stand out a little bit more the background will also need a lot more work and refining So another thing that I like using when drawing clothes is just using a tortillion. I can just use I, I can just lay down some of the darkest areas, uh, some of the folds in the clothes and th then I can just use the tortillion to blend that around and create some of the midtones. You can see how nice this color looks no now when I added some of the highlights with a, uh, with a pencil eraser. It really looks like it has thickness and shape. But now I'm back to working on the face because I really need to do a little bit more shading there. I'm <clears throat> not entirely happy with the neck and the face itself also needs more shading. I'm going to do most of that with a black colored pencil. I'm also going to try to create a rough texture around the jaw and the chin to maybe add a little bit of stubble. Although he is fairly clean shaven in this picture. And adding some lines and some texture to the lips as well Rocky Balboa is a very interesting character and it's one of my favorite movie franchises my favorite movies are probably Rocky 1 and Rocky 3 And like I said, I have a new Rocky drawing coming up real soon. This one won't be a portrait, it'll it will be taking place in uh, inside the ring. So I hope you'll check that, out, that one out as well. You can see how much texture I added to the face now just using my black colored pencil. But I'm still not happy with the shadow under the jaw and trying to add a little more value and texture there. <clears throat> now I need to work on this medallion. and the shirt. This area is very dark so there's not much to be done there other than just cover it with a charcoal pencil to make that cross stand out. And just a few suggestions to make it appear as though it's made of metal. Uh, now on 
to the right side of the jacket using the same approach just laying down some of the darker areas and then spreading the charcoal with my tortillion and you can see how quickly I can create something that looks like leather it looks a little bit messy at first but I can always refine it later the face is mostly done I'm just gonna do a little bit of work on the jacket and now all I need to do is sign it so that's the finished drawing I hope you enjoyed this narrated video as well I'll see you in the next video which is coming up soon thank you for watching Bye for now.